I did a poll asking what you think I'd write into next, and... Looks like most of you are right. It's a centret. I really don't want to accidentally knock it out, so I'm just going to throw a Pokeball right away. That was really easy. Let's name her something cute and super creative. Definitely not inspired by something I found off the ground. Since now we have a newest member, we have to go and turn her into a big old plushie. After a day or so of patterning, I trace it out on fur and cut it and I'm ready to assemble. I made these little drawings to try to help show what part I'm working on next, but overall I hope it's not too confusing. Also, if you didn't see the last episode, hey, I'm Pumpkin and I'm out here just trying to do my very first Nuzlocke, but with a spicy little twist. I'm making it a push lock. I'd say a push lock is very similar to a Nuzlocke, has almost all the same rules. And for this run specifically, I'm going to only catch Gen 2 Pokemon. So if I go into a new area and it's only like Weedles I find, they don't count. The only reason I'm doing that is so Kanto Pokemon can shine in their own game. The second rule might be a little obvious. Even if my Pokemon evolve, I have to stop and go make them as a plushie too. But if my Pokemon faint, obviously the evolution version of it is not going to get a plushie. And here is where a push lock is different from a nose lock. If one of my Pokemon get knocked out, instead of going to like a graveyard box, they'll be taken away by an Officer Jenny for all the pokey abuse. But I'll always have the rules written in the description just in case. Anyway, Centret was so much more easier to make than Chikorita was. Acorn took me about three to four days to put together. I thankfully had extra fur already, like some white for the tummy ring, dark brown for the ears and parts of the tail, and pink minky for the paw pads and the inner ears. I just didn't have the main body color. So I opened up my swatch book and I was looking at all the colors and I think this one's a pretty good fit. Oh man, I didn't realize how lucky I was too. When I was doing the tail, I almost ran out of fur. It looked like I had a lot, but the tail is like the same size as the whole entire centret. So if I didn't pattern everything right, I was going to have to go and buy a whole nother yard and then wait another two weeks. That would have been like a nightmare. I didn't really show any sewing segments, so I try to make it up for it right here in case you really liked it. I mostly hand sew everything because it's all these crazy shapes and it's really hard for me to do it with the sewing machine. But since this tail is so big and mostly straight, I'm able to put it right in there and just go right around. It's pretty easy. And since Centret's just like a simple, cute little circle, I did try to make some parts a bit more complicated just to stand out. For example, I made the ears more 3D, but it does help the plush. It keeps the ears straight up instead of being super floppy, just like always resting on the forehead. I do wish I made them a little taller, but I still really like how they look though. Looky there, a finished tail. Wait, what's she holding? That's weird. Huh. Oh, it's gone. I guess never mind. Don't pay attention to that. Unexpectedly, Centret became more circular the more I stuffed it, but it still looked pretty cute. Just so you know, I did try to design her fingers nice and tiny, but the fur likes to make it all big and puffy. I'm sure you noticed her little hands are reaching for the sky. Oh, we don't want that. So we're gonna stitch her little fingers to her wrist. The official art and the games have the little hands closed, so why not? It looks pretty cute. I'm really glad I went with a separate finger look too. It was a lot more effort, but it turned out really good. I added the feet at a pretty late stage. It's because I wasn't sure where to place them, but I also wanted them to be really floppy and dangly. I thought that'd be really neat. And the very last touch to bring her to life, eyes and a mouth. That's Acorn all finished, and she can join the party! A 
whole month later, finally turning this game back on. Usually if I haven't played a game in forever, and I'm at the beginning, I just totally restart. But I can't do that here, that's super illegal. Well, it's time to go up on the map, Route 30, for my first encounter. But, I don't really encounter anything, it's just a bunch of Countomons. So I figure I'll just level up my team while I walk around so when I fight the trainers I don't get just totally destroyed. I realized pretty quickly that Silver version is the scary version in the beginning. I had the game sped up to level up faster and was totally not paying attention and almost got knocked out by poison. When I realized I got so scared, felt like I was just gonna waste all my time making acorn for nothing. I didn't want her to pass out on the way to the Pokemon Center, so I gave her a potion and walked back really carefully. But I learned my lesson though, don't speed up with all these poison types around. This inspired me to prep up a bit more, so after this I went to the Pokemart, bought more antidotes, potions, and even some more Pokeballs just in case. Oh yeah, let me know if you like the layout. I don't know if it's a little too hard to see or tell what I'm doing. I based the Game Boy on a Game Boy a friend of mine had. Special edition with a little light. It was a little Pikachu cheek. I just made it a little Lugia for the game. And look, we're finally far enough to have our first battle. I'm nervous because I'm still pretty shaken up about the poison thing with Weedle. So I'm really paranoid in this fight. It feels so silly because who's scared of fighting little Joey? Even so, it's still exciting to have my first fight. So I send out Acorn and see how she does. Sadly, I don't think I trained enough. Or maybe she's just not that tough, but we'll toughen her up. I don't want her to get beaten by no rat. Joey keeps telling his Rattata to tail whip me, which makes me really scared thinking I'll get one shot. I don't know if that's a possibility, but my brain was just way too wired from that. Just to be safe, I switched to Onion, the Chikorita, the best starter ever, you know. Joey makes Rattata do a tail whip for some reason, but that's okay, we just take him out, make it easier. Well, I'm glad I didn't have to give anyone away on the first fight, that would've been pretty embarrassing. Now I gotta do the second fight. Off screen I gave Acorn one more level so she can fight a bit better in the second fight. And she does pretty well, takes out the Pidgey and Rattata. Who knew Team Sky would be this easy? Oh well. This isn't a hardcore Nuzlocke run, but I don't really want to overlevel for the gym. I don't want to make it too easy, and I don't want to make it too hard. Also, I was wondering if I should try to add two things to each episode. So instead of making one plush member, that I should try and make two plushies. I think that would make the videos a bit more fun to watch. I might make a poll on it, so keep your eye out for that and let me know the yes or no. All right, silly me thought I was gonna go up the road and fight more trainers on Route 31 and go look at Dark Cave, but instead I find my encounter for this route. Thought there's only nighttime encounters here I can get, but well, Looky here. Guess we'll have to see what happens in episode 3! Can't end without thanking my Patreons. Thank you Lara and Rox so much. Consider joining to help me out. All the materials cost a lot of money and this, this helps. 